Hi everyone, welcome to the Nav Know How session on um, configuring the web client for Nav 2013, 2013 R2, 2015, 2016, and it's also applicable for Nav 2017. Um, if you have any questions, please wait till the end. I'll have a Q&A. If you can't hear me, um, or you can't see my screen, or anything like that, just send me a message, and I will do my best to get it working for you. Okay, so I will continue. Um, first things first, um, today we're going to be working on the NAV 20, uh, 2016 client. Um, this is one of the latest clients. NAV 2017 did come out yesterday, but I haven't yet, yet been able to test the web client or the tablet and phone app. Um, but this is applicable for anyone who has version 2013, 2013 R2, 2015, 2016, and 2017. Okay, um, so the first thing to note is if you have Nav 2013 or Nav 2013 R2, you can't use the Android or iOS or Windows Store app. You can only use the web client version of, um, of the web client. I'll try to show you what that looks like. It looks like this. It's, it's, um, it's basically a cut down version of Nav. Um, but if you have Nav 2015 um, or 2016 or 2017, this web client also can be used with the um, with the, uh, an app from the App Store um, on any of your devices. Uh, so I will show today. I'll be demoing it in the Windows Store app, but the principle is exactly the same. It uses all the same logic and pages. So this is what the um, the app looks like. If I just resume the connection, and this is connecting to a Cronus database on my SQL Server, Cronus SQL. Um, so we'll, we'll go through how this has been configured today, so you can get a feel for how to set this up on your own environment and infrastructure. Okay, uh, let me come out of here. So the first thing we're going to do is look at where my database has been set up. Um, so if I open up my development client, um, just to show you, it's sitting on my my SQL Server, Cronus SQL. The database name is called Demo Database Nav, Metadrop. Um, doesn't matter about my SQL version. And here's my RTC string to let me connect to the role-tailed environment. Um, this will be important because this will help us configure um, the Nav web client going forward, which we're going to set up a brand new instance of today. Um, also, uh, what you should know is I'm running this from my desktop PC, so I'm on my laptop at the moment. So I'll be connecting in through an RDP session to my desktop PC, which is hosting both my nav services and my web server. So it's, um, it's running IIS as well. Um, if you aren't familiar with these things, you need to speak to your IT department to um, show you. And this will also be on the website um, once I finish recording. So you can go through it at your own uh, own pace if I'm going a bit quick. I have got quite a lot to cram in today, um, so apologies if it's a little bit too fast. Okay, so if we go on to my nav and web server, um, it's MetaDTP 11x. I know my nav services are running on here because if I go to my services, snap it in, and I go down to... I can see my nav service for Dynamics Nav 90, which is Nav 2016. And this service here allows me to connect in through the Rolltailer client, which is, I will go and open that one moment. Here, this one. So I'm connecting in on this service here, which is running on MetaDTP 11x port 7046 on the instance Dynamics Nav 90 and here's the service. If we go to IAS, um, Internet Information Services, we can see I've got my web client set up. As part of the standard Nav install, it, um, it puts on your help and web client onto uh, an applicable uh, web server. Um, as default, this should be enabled with your standard install. And if you went through Metaphorix, um, we would have done this for you at the point of uh, implementation. In here, um, we can see 
it's published as Dynamics Nav 90, and it, it's being published on both port 8080, which is unsecure, which would be okay for internal within your business. But if you wanted to publish this externally, you should publish it on um, HTTPS. It doesn't have to be port 443, but for my demo today, um, because that is, the, uh, that is the default secure port. So if we browse to that, that should launch our web client. And another thing you I'll go into in a moment is um, because it's secure, you have to use a certificate. I'm using the Metaphorix wildcard certificate, but I imagine your businesses will have an SSL certificate, and I'll show you how to configure that as well um, in, sh in a moment. Okay. And it's also using uh, Windows authentication, the same authentication that I use to get in on the actual um, full RTC client as well. So if we go back, here it is. Okay, um, and the next thing I should talk about is the web client. Um, so if you're not running it from the actual app, which is on the Play Store for Android, or the Apple Store for App um, for iOS, or or the Windows Store for um, Windows OS, you can you can still run um, the web client on any device, but you just use the web client URL in your browser. An example of that is if I go to IE. Here's the full web client experience. Um, I haven't done anything to the URL. I just opened it. Um, from the, the root of the uh, URL here, so if I click that, it gives you the, the desktop experience for your web browser. But if you didn't, if you weren't able to, um, let's say your device didn't have the requirements to meet um, the using the Android app or the iOS app, you can still run the web client with a different aspect ratio. And to do that, you can in the URL you can put in at the end tablet.aspx or phone.aspx and it changes the aspect ratio of the um, of the window to scale appropriately for your device so for a tablet it would be more like um, it would be more like this and for the phone it would be more like this and you can see how it um, it fits the screen based on the uh, the page the root page you go in on so phone, and you can see it's um, it's squashed everything uh, to work with different devices. So that's a simple way without having to download any of the apps. So if you just publish your web client, um, you could publish that externally with uh, an SSL certificate and just give your users um, just the, the right URL for whatever device they use. Just to show you... Um, show you those pages. If you go into IIS and expand out your web client and click the instance that we're going to work with, if we explore this, we can see in the web client folder there will be a phone.aspx here and a tablet aspx here. And they they just um yeah they they change the aspect ratio to fit with your device. Okay. Um also I believe in the newer versions, it also resizes automatically, so you may not even need to put in um, put in these. But if you want to force the the sizing, that is one way of doing it. Um, so today, what I was going to do was I was going to set up a brand new web client um, instance in here. I was going to make a new nav service um, for it as well, and then I was going to connect up my um, a new version of the app. To it, so I was going to sign out of here, and this is exactly what it will look like from your Android or iOS device. You put in your service; it has to have an SSL certificate, or else you can't join. Um, that's why it's so. Um, that's why you're very limited unless you use an SSL certificate, um, which makes sure you've got an encrypted connection between your nav server and um, your device. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a new nav service. So to do that, I'm going to go onto my nav server. I'm going to go to my administration. Um, 
administration tool here. I'm going to open up the console and add a new instance. I'm going to call it nav no how web. I'll copy that. I'm going to give it a port 50,001, 50,002, 50,003, 50,004. I'm going to give it, put my username and password in. Um, this is going to run the service account, but you should have one set up uh, prime that is purely for you running your nav service. Um, if you don't, you need to speak to your IT department to do that. Okay, so that's going to create our new nav service, and this will pop up in the, um, the services console in the screen below. So if I refresh this, we've got our new nav service here. I can't turn it on yet because I need to make sure it's configured correctly to connect to my database. And we're going to connect it to the exact same database as before. Um, so it should have retained the, the details from the one above, which is demo database uh, 19 meta drop on Cronus SQL. So I'm happy with that. So we'll save that. And we're going to start the service. Okay, and if we go into our dev environment, so nav 2016 dev, I'm just going to check the service is actually running correctly, um, which it should be. Uh, and there's an easy way to find out. You connect to the database in your dev environment, file, database, information. And if we drill down in here with the arrow or F6, we should be able to see if the service is running, which it is. So I'm going to take a copy of that um, because this is going to be useful for when we connect our web client up to it. So um, we could connect to this directly using a Nav2016 client. We could put it in here and drop it in and connect using the RTC client. But we're going to no, we're not going to do that today. We're going to go to our Dynamics Nav administration shell, and that is a pa uh, a bunch of PowerShell commandlets. And it should be, as default, it should be installed on your nav server. Um, here it is. So I opened up the that icon as administrator. Um, it has to have admin rights. I'm going to type in new nav web server instance. And if we go up, we can actually see the commandlet up here. New nav uh, web server instance there. Okay, so if we press enter, it's going to ask us for some details. Right, so we're going to put in the server, which is the nav server. We could put in localhost. Um, in fact, I will put in localhost because that is. I could just put meta dtp 11x. The server instance. Um, we can change all this after, but I'm just going to call, keep it all exactly the same. Nav no how web. Web server instance nav no how web. Okay, so what this has done. So it's gone and created a brand new instance of the web client in here. So if we go and refresh the website in IAS, we've now got a new nav no know how web. Um, and if we open up the folder for it and we look at the web config, it should have copied in um, the server. So it's made an, uh, the server instance it's going to try and connect to is nav know how web. That's the nav. Uh, server instance. Uh, if we go and look at the port, that is not correct. It's using the default, which is 7046. We want to connect it to the client services port. So this is where it's important to um, make sure your service is running. So it's 50002. So in the web config, I just go and put in 50002. And save that. Um, so it's a protected file, so we need to save it outside the folder and copy it back in uh, and replace it with admin privileges. Okay. So now, if we restart the website here, so if we go up to the top level, restart, that will bring in the new web config um, parameters. And if we navigate, uh, we browse to it, it should take us straight in. So we just need to make sure we put in the correct 
computer name, so it's meta gtp 11x.metaphorics.co.uk. Now know how web. Okay, there we go. Let's take it as in. Wait for that to load up. Okay, so there you go. So what we've done is we've made a new nav service. We've made a new nav web server instance. We've connected them together and it's now published. Now what uh, is important to know is I can't connect to um, that nav web server instance using the apps unless it's running with um, an SSL binding, which means it's running with a, an SSL certificate which allows you to encrypt the connection between the client and the, um, the server. To check that or to set it up, um, the first thing you need to do is in your top level of your um, IIS, you need to make sure that you've got service certificates enabled. Your IT department should be able to do this for you. And if you click into your service certificates, you can either make a new self-signed certificate, which would run for your local PC um, or for your server, and that's fine if it's all internal, but it won't be possible um, unless you've got a wildcard certificate or a, or a certificate um, hope given to you by your IT department to use externally, you won't be able to publish uh, outside of your um, domain. Uh, internal infrastructure. So I've I've got a wildcard certificate and basically what that means is I can publish um, because we own uh, the metaphorics.co.uk domain name and our website for example www.metaphorics.co.uk um, we can put any any prefix on our domain name and it will get authenticated if we put the SSL certificate on it. So for example we've got um, a support portal and a nav portal which run our web client externally and they are both nav.metaphorics.co.uk and support.metaphorics.co.uk and because we've got this little star, this wildcard we, we paid for this one-off certificate and it allows us to have as many um, prefixes as we want to be able to um, have a secure connection coming in to the business. Um, you can, you can just buy SSL certificates with just one um, like prefix, for example you could just buy one with a, f a flat fee that says nav.mybusiness.co.uk um, but for us because we have so many uses for it it's uh, that's why we've done it but if you're only interested in doing this internally and you don't care about um, external you could just make a self-signed certificate um, but you should ask your IT guys to help you because you might need to do some some IT things with the DNS um, but anyway so I've added my certificate by importing it and then on my website in the bindings, uh, which is here, I added in port uh, SSL, or I added in HTTPS, okay, and that is by default 443, and so here it is, and I picked up my certificate, which I added in the top level, and now my website is being published with um, HTTPS. But what that what that means is, if if I tried to browse to it directly, um, like so, it's going to be um, unsecure because I'm coming in on this certificate. But I'm coming in on it doesn't recognise that it's the right domain name. Um, what it's looking for. So if I show you in IE, if you go click the little padlock and view certificates, it's expecting to have that domain name in the URL. And that's why I've had to put in meta gtp 11 x which is my PC name, then my domain name, and that allows me to have a secure connection to the uh, the server. Okay, um, so now if we connect the app to it, I just need to make sure the port is exposed on my server. Um, so I'm publishing on 50,000 and uh, no 443, so that should be all ready to go. So if I just grab the the URL, which is, let's go back to IIS, Nav Know How Web, browse. Oh, I have it in the other screen, didn't I? Nav Know How Web, web client. So if I grab that and I go to my app, enter a new service name, so it's uh, metadtp11x.metaphorics.co.uk and then it's nav 
know how web tab uh, let's see okay there we go so it's um you wouldn't get this far unless it recognized that this was a correct URL and um, if if you didn't have the HTTPS on here it would not let you connect so now I put in my Windows password and we should be able to get straight in using the app or Android or web client or iOS okay and that takes you straight in another um, important thing to understand is at the moment we're using Windows authentication and what that means is it's trying to use our Windows domain account to connect so if I was trying to um, connect in externally I'd have to put in my domain and um, my username and password into either the app or the web client but you can also publish the web client using um, various authentication methods and you can change these in the web config so in the web config for your web client if you scroll down you can see there are different types of um, authentication methods the default is Windows so if you're doing an internal you're not, you're not bothered about external uh, publishing it Windows is the default and it will just work because your nav as default your nav client will always run on Windows so if you're in nav um, using the full RTC client you'll be able to go straight in with the web client as well you can also turn on username um, and that's where it asks you for username and password and also uh, one of the more interesting ones um, which we've used for quite a few customers is the nav user password and how that works is in nav in users against your user who you log in as um, we can actually just make a new one uh, we can just call it demo you can actually just give it a password uh, let's give it permission as well super you can actually give it a password so we could say alright I want you to, you to be demo dollar one oh, it's not a good enough password right. put in a password So now it's not connected to any Windows account and we can configure the web client to use the nav user password authentication method by going to change it here. So we say nav, uh, nav user password and if we restart the service and make the same change in our nav service, so if I bring you back to our nav service and show you um, client services. Oh, is it up here? There it is, credential type. So your nav user password. So your web client and your nav service both need to be running the same authentication method. But you could, if you wanted, um, skip Windows authentication altogether and have people logging in with um, with base essentially their database logins. Um, and that's another way to get around the domain uh, issues if you didn't want your domain users to be logging in. Okay, um, so we've what we've we been through today. Then we've talked about the different types of web client. Um, so for Nav 2013 and Nav 2013R2, you can't use any of the apps, but you can just use the web client on any device. In 2015, 2016, 2017, you can use um, any of the apps and the web clients and use different aspect ratios. Um, we've talked about how to set up a brand new Nav server and a nav web server instance and connect them together we've bound that uh, nav web server instance to a an SSL certificate um, I've touched briefly on why you need it because the apps don't let you connect in unless it's secure um, and then we've talked about how to connect your um, your app to your web essentially you're connecting it to your web client if you have any questions please let me know or just email me um, all the system requirements for whether or not your um, client is uh, what what apps it, it can use they're all on the web so if you go um, just to Google and type in nav 2016 system requirements for example and universal app 
So it tells you what version of OS you can use or what browsers can be used. And it goes all the way back to 2013 um, or 2015. Um, and uh, 2017 as well, which um, I need to figure out. But yeah, it's they're all supported. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Um, otherwise, I will uh, call it a day there. Thank you.